The PGM-19 Jupiter was the first nuclear-armed, medium-range ballistic missile of the United States Air Force. The Jupiter was originally designed by the U.S. Army, which was looking for a highly accurate missile designed to strike high-value targets like bridges, railway yards, troop concentrations and the like. Jupiter traces its history ultimately to the PGM-11 Redstone missile, the U.S.'s first nuclear ballistic missile. Lower-ranking Navy officials became increasingly interested when the Army and Air Force began serious development of their long-range missiles. The committee took up the concept, and in September 1955 released a report calling for the development of a sea-based missile system. The Navy would develop systems to launch the Army missile from ships and, later, submarines. On 2 December 1955, the secretaries of the Army and Navy publicly announced the dual Army-Navy program to create a land and sea-based MRBM. In April 1956, as part of a widespread effort to assign names to various missile projects, the Army's effort was given the name, Jupiter, and the Air Forces became, Thor. The fighting between the Army and Air Force grew through 1955 and 1956 until practically every missile system the Army was involved in was being attacked in the press. Even in this case, the missile would be much smaller than Jupiter. Jupiter was expected to weigh 160,000 pounds, while estimates of a solid fuel missile with similar range were closer to 30,000 pounds, along with a similar reduction in size which was of paramount importance to a submarine design. The Navy announced their desire to develop their own missile that summer, initially under the name Jupiter S. After intensive follow-up studies, the Navy withdrew from the Jupiter program in December 1956. In its place, the Navy began development of what was then known as the Fleet Ballistic Missile Program, and the missile was later renamed Polaris, their first submarine-launched ballistic missile. New orders for 32 prototypes and 62 operational missiles were soon placed, bringing the total number of Jupiters to be built to 94. The first, hand-built at ABMA, would be delivered by the end of FY57, and the first production models from Chrysler's Michigan Ordnance Missile Plant near Warren, Michigan between FY58 and FY61. A primary complaint about Jupiter was that the design's shorter range placed it within relatively easy striking distance of Soviet weapons, both missiles and aircraft. A mobile missile needs Army-type troops to move, emplace, protect and fire it. A decision to organize mobile ballistic missile units would in logic have led to transferring the operational use of the weapon back to the Army, where it should have been all the time. Kurt Debus had led the construction of launch pads for Redstone missiles at Cape Canaveral, Florida, building the twin LC-5 and LC-6 pads about 500 feet apart with a common blockhouse located 300 feet away between the two. Jupiters were delivered to the Cape strapped to wheeled trailers and flown to the Cape's skid strip on C-124s. They were then moved to Hangar R at the Cape industrial area where the nose cone was mated with the missile, and electrical checkout was performed. After the Army's head start, the Air Force had since caught up and attempted its first Thor launch on 26 January 1957, which ended with the missile exploding on the launch pad. Jupiter test flights commenced with the launch of AM-1A on 1 March 1957 from LC-5. AM-1B's flight went entirely according to plan up to T plus 70 seconds when the missile started becoming unstable in flight and finally broke up at T plus 93 seconds. Jupiter missiles were used in a series of suborbital biological test flights. The monkeys rode in the nose cone of the missile to an altitude of 300 miles and a distance of 1,500 miles down the Atlantic Missile Range from Cape Canaveral. In June 1958 the new French President Charles de Gaulle refused to accept basing any Jupiter missiles in France. In 1958, the United States Air Force activated the 864th Strategic Missile Squadron at ABMA. Although the USAF briefly considered training its Jupiter crews at Vandenberg AFB, California, it later decided to conduct all of its training at Huntsville. The deployed missiles were under command of 36th Strategic Interdiction Air Brigade at Gioia del Col Air Base, Italy. One squadron totaling 15 missiles was deployed at five sites near Izmir, Turkey from 1961 to 1963, operated by USAF personnel, with the first flight of three Jupiter missiles turned over to the Turk have a Kuvetleri in late October 1962, but USAF personnel retaining control of nuclear warhead arming. On four occasions between mid-October 1961 and August 1962, Jupiter mobile missiles carrying 1.4 megatons of TNT nuclear warheads were struck by lightning at their bases in Italy. After the fourth lightning strike on a Jupiter MRBM, the USAF placed protective lightning strike diversion tower arrays at all of the Italian and Turkish Jupiter MRBM missile sites. 
In 1962, a Bulgarian MiG-17 reconnaissance airplane was reported to have crashed into an olive grove near one of the U.S. Jupiter missile launch sites in Italy, after overflying the site. Jupiter squadrons consisted of 15 missiles and approximately 500 military personnel with five flights of three missiles each, manned by five officers and ten NCOs. The missiles arrived at the emplacement on large trailers, while still on the trailer, the crew attached the hinged launch pedestal to the base of the missile which was hauled to an upright position using a winch. Once the missile was vertical, fuel and oxidizer lines were connected and the bottom third of the missile was encased in a flower petal shelter, consisting of wedge-shaped metal panels, allowing crew members to service the missiles in all weather conditions. Once the fuel and oxidizer tanks were full, the launch controlling officer and two crewmen in a mobile launch control trailer could launch the missiles. RIM teams inspected new missiles and provided maintenance and repair to missiles in the field. The Jupiter MRBM was also modified by adding upper stages, in the form of clustered Sargent-derived rockets, to create a space launch vehicle called Juno-2, not to be confused with the Juno-I which was a Redstone Jupiter C missile development. There were 46 test launches, all launched from Cape Canaveral Missile Annex, Florida. The 26th of April 1957 Jupiter AM-1 BCCAFSLC-5 missile test suborbital failure propellant slosh led to control failure and missile breakup T plus 93 seconds. The 19th of December 1957 Jupiter AM-4 CCAFSLC-26B missile test suborbital failure turbopump failure caused loss of thrust T plus 116 seconds. Missile remained structurally intact until impact with the ocean. The missile, named Columbia, was presented to the city in the early 1960s by the U.S. Air Force. The Frontiers of Flight Museum at Dallas Love Field in Dallas, Texas, has a Jupiter missile on display outdoors.